Hello and welcome to Rick's RC Flying Channel. This is episode one on building an instrument panel. So we're going to now look at the assembly of the instrument panel and uh, you know as we started off of course was with a simple template which is you know you got to cut a how many it takes to get a perfect fit and um, you know this is flexible and I've had it happen where you know because it was flexible it was easy to get in and out of a tight area however though uh, when it was time to put the actual instrument panel in I had a really hard time so what I do is I, I do make a mock-up out of a stiffer material. This is just cardboard. And I make sure that I can fit it in there while it's a much stiffer piece. And once I'm happy, I figured out how to get them in, uh, then I, keep, uh, I go ahead with the project. So of course we need a back plate to the instrument panel. And uh, this one happens to be uh, cardboard. Now, of course, it can be balsa wood or plywood. It depends on the model if it's uh, if the back of the instrument is actually a structural component. Um, if that's the case, well, then, you know, it has to be either plywood or balsa wood. Uh, this is an ARF and uh, there is no structural requirement. So I'm just using cardboard. It's stiff enough and it's, it's fairly light. And um, then, of course, we need uh, the face of the instrument panel. Now, this here happens to be 132nd uh, birch plywood or 0.8 millimeters, so it's very thin. Now, why I like using this as a surface because I want that metal look. The grain is very smooth, it's very fine, so it's very easy to finish it, uh, the painted version. And um, I mean, you can use balsa wood. It just requires a lot more preparation in terms of finishing the balsa wood to get that metal look. So this here was cut with a laser, which makes it, you know, the precision is just, you know, uh, unbelievable. And uh, although before I ended up with a laser printer, I had made these tools and um, I machined these out of aluminum. It has a very, very sharp edge. And of course, it's the exact size to make, in this case, quarter scale instruments. And to be uh, honest, this here cuts almost as uh, precisely and clean as, um, as the laser cutter. As a matter of fact, that one example with the ARF, uh, that instrument panel was cut with these and uh, it's just this is still that much more precise particularly in lining everything up and uh, much quicker and uh, of course i made different size ones depending on the instruments now even if you didn't have this um, you could use a drill bit and uh, drill out the holes and i don't have it right here but i used to use a dowel that or you know a piece of round wood that was the size of the instrument and then you go in there and you sand, sand it all out. Of course, it takes a lot longer and it's very difficult to achieve this, this kind of precision. So anyways, that's, you know, three different ways you can make these. <clears throat> and then you saw the 3D printer was producing these uh, instrument basils, which are here. And then once that's done, we do a trial fit and um, if you saw the one of my videos that talks about setting up a shop, I mentioned a glass surface. And this is a perfect example. Because when you're pre-fitting and working with instrument panels, you need it absolutely flat just to make sure that the basils are precisely sitting in at the right height. You know, because if it's uneven, I'll tell you, the, the basils sitting in there won't all be the same uh, elevation in the instrument panel. So I just do a trial fit and they, 
you know, because of the technology using a 3D printer and a laser, the fit's unbelievable. Like, I mean, it's 99% fit. So I'm happy with that. So now we can just take them out. Oh, that's done. So here are the instrument faces that I've decided to use. Now, these are actual photos of instruments. And then I scaled them to quarter scale. And then I printed it on glossy photo paper. And I, I like the glossy photo paper because it kind of makes them look like these instrument faces are under glass. Um, again, it's standoff scaled, but it's, it's very effective. Now, if I was building a, uh, you know, a, a super scale type airplane, then I would want that glass look. And then what I would do is, uh, this happens to be Lexon. You can use just about any plastic. And just as an example, I would sandwich it in between like this. And depending on the lighting, it definitely, uh, it looks just like glass. It's really, really nice, very effective. Uh, but again, for standoff scale, I just use the glossy papers uh, more than adequate, and it looks, uh, it looks pretty authentic. Okay, so we got things here pretty well organized. The next step is uh, we have to know precisely where to glue these instrument faces. So I can't afford this moving around. So what we're just going to do is uh, my handy, this is my third hand. Um, I'm sure a lot of you use this. Just, okay. So now we need to inscribe our circles. So you make sure, you know, you got that exactly. And that, this cardboard piece was cut on the laser as well. So you know, we expect this to be like, you know, well, basically like a hundred percent. So again, take your pencil very carefully, scribe these out. It's okay. Now we know exactly where to put the instruments off. So we're just going to kind of have a look and, um, so there it is. So now we're going to glue them down like that in a second, but we're just going to make sure they've been cut out properly. So that already looks, looks great. So now comes the time to glue them. Now you can use all kinds of different glues. I happen to use canopy glue. And um, the most important thing is about using these glues is you want some time to work with it. You sure wouldn't work, want to use any kind of CA glue. It's just not enough time to move these around just to get everything right. And then you'll see in a moment that we actually do a trial fit and sometimes still have to move them. So it's very important, whatever you use, that you have some time. And the other thing I like about canopy glue, it glues crystal clear. So if the glue ends up somewhere it's not supposed to at least it's crystal clear and you know chances of you seeing it wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be possible so what I do is I um, I just put some on here okay so we're just gonna and boy you sure don't need very much because uh, just think about what you're really just it's not really a structural event here we just want to keep the instrument in place And, you know, just take yourself, like, I got just a piece of piano wire here. I make all kinds of little applicator tools. I very rarely ever use a popsicle stick or something I've seen people use. They're just kind of too big. Okay, did we glue everything? Yeah, we did. That one, not in the right place. So now we go around and we move them. Just make some fine adjustments. Okay, so we're happy with that. We'll just do a trial fit with some basils in there. Now, I sometimes even make faces depending on the airplane. I use a veneer 
uh, and then it's just varnished or whatever, you know, if it's a real vintage, uh, like certain World War One airplanes and that. So you can finish them off any way you want. So, of course, you would never put this on and then try painting it. It would be next to impossible unless you, I guess, did it by hand. But here's the painted version. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And it, it leaves a really nice uh, finish. Okay, so I've pretty well cleaned these all out, creamed them out, got rid of the paint that was inside there. And uh, they all fit real nice now. So that's good. So now the next step is to epoxy this on here. So that's what we're going to do next. I've uh, just finished mixing some epoxy. And uh, we don't want it squeezing out in areas we don't want glue. Okay, so we got to really carefully fit this. Okay, so the basils are being positioned into the instrument panel. And I'll show you how that's done. You take a basil, okay, and then just dip it into the glue carefully. I spread the glue out on a piece of cardboard and then take it to the instrument panel and drop it in. Okay, so there we have it. There's the instrument panel. And uh, the next step is to put switches on and the placards and so forth. But that'll be for the next uh, video, uh, video two. So there we go. We have a, an instrument panel. We'll have to make sure we dry, this all dries really well. That's why we don't want to start drilling holes where we have to put certain uh, knobs in and so forth. And uh, it's important that it really dries well. But uh, that looks great. Okay. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please hit like and or subscribe. I always welcome comments or if you have questions. And thanks again and bye for now.